If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you know what a context-free grammar is. If not, check out the link in the description. If you watched the previous video, you know that a context-free grammar is a way of checking if a sentence is grammatical. Where does a grammar come from? And when a sentence is ambiguous, how do you know which interpretation you should actually prefer? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Before, when I talked about this, you had a sentence that comes in and you get a bunch of parses. But what we want to do now is instead of having an undifferentiated set, of possible parses given a yield, we want to have a distribution over possible parse trees. There should be a probability for each of the trees, and those probabilities should sum to one. So this leads to a couple of questions. How do we parameterize the grammar to give us this distribution? How do we learn this parameterization from data? And finally, how do we figure out the possible parse trees given a particular yield of a sentence? To parameterize, a probabilistic context-free grammar, what we're going to do is assume that for every production we have some function q that tells us the conditional likelihood of having that derivation. So we're going to condition on the left-hand side, and then we're going to ask what is the probability that the left-hand side turned into the right-hand side. And given the probability of each of these individual productions, the probability of the entire tree is the product of all of the productions in the tree. This is connected to the context-free property because we only care about what the production is and this is independent. That makes the calculation really easy to do. Okay. So this answers the question of just how do you compute the probability of a tree if you know the probabilities, but where do those probabilities come from? The answer to that is to get a bunch of sentences and parse them by hand. This was done by Mitch Marcus, who parsed a million sentences from the newspaper The Wall Street Journal. This requires fairly sophisticated annotators, for example, linguistics or ad students. But once you have a bunch of parse trees, it becomes fairly easy to compute the conditional probability of a rule. If you want the conditional probability of a noun phrase turning into determiner adjective noun, then all you have to do is to take the MLE estimate of the number of times you saw the derivation NP goes to that adjective, and then divide that by the total number of times you ever saw NP as the head of any rule. But Jordan, don't you always say that taking the MLE is bad because it leads to a zero estimate of the probability? Yeah, but this is a case where zeros aren't the end of the world. When you get a zero, it rules out a lot of possible trees, and so you get fewer options for grammatical sentences. You don't want to say that everything is grammatical with a tiny probability. As long as your grammar isn't too fine-grained, e.g. lexicalized, you'll still get all of the grammatical sentences because the non-terminal categories are pretty broad. But if you wanted to be a cool Bayesian and still do smoothing, how would that work? There are two general ways you might do this, and they both use a distribution from Bayesian nonparametrics called the Chinese restaurant process. If you want to see how this gets used in language models, check out the link down below. The first approach is to have a more specific distribution given, say, lexicalized non-terminals. So let's say that we create a VP just for the verb eat. So the VP eat non-terminal has some distribution over productions. But that distribution needs to back off to a more generalized VP distribution. And then all of its descendants will have specialized distributions. Uh, so the thing uh, that you eat, what non-terminals get produced by a noun under the VP eat, uh, will have its own distribution. And this can encode things like selectional restrictions or selectional preferences. And uh, this was one of the big insights of the Collins parser. And this would encode things like you can eat sandwiches, bagels, and things like that. But this is going to be a limited distribution, so this distribution needs to back off to a more general distribution over nouns. And this would allow you to have probabilities for other nouns that aren't necessarily in the eat verb phrase lexicalized grammar. And so this way you don't have to worry about zero probability estimates, but if you have a good idea of what gets eaten, you can model that fairly precisely. The second Bayesian nonparametric approach is to cache subtrees. In other words, if you want to have a higher probability for common subtrees, you can just directly generate something like uh, the United States of America directly from a noun phrase without going through all of the intermediate steps. So instead of going from noun phrase to 
uh, determiner, noun, and then so on and so forth, uh, you can just generate everything all at once. The tables now correspond to individual phrases, say generated from the non-terminal NP, so this can encode the man, a camera, or the White House. All of it gets generated at once, so the stickiness of particular phrases can get encoded. But again, this is going to be fairly sparse, and so you always need to back off. And so when you create a new table in this Chinese restaurant process, you can always generate a new derivation of the noun phrase for every adapted non-terminal. So you can use a Chinese restaurant process to have a distribution over subtrees and use a regular PCFG as the distribution that generates a new table. This is called, as usual, the base distribution. This idea came from the adapter grammars paper uh, listed here from Mark Johnson et al. But uh, this is a bit of a diversion. We're not going to talk about this. I just wanted to mention it very briefly as it's something that I find fascinating and it's an active area of research. In the next video, we'll return to simple non-terminals and go through an algorithm to find out what is the most likely interpretation of a sentence given its yield. This is just one video from a course that I'm teaching. If you want to get the whole context, check out the course webpage linked below. There you can find all of the videos in the right order. YouTube likes to show you older videos out of order, homeworks, exercises, and recommended readings. And if you want to help other people find videos like this, please be sure to like and subscribe to provide a big gradient to the algorithm.